This week, there are a good few games dropping on the Nintendo Switch. We're going to cover a bunch of them. Welcome to Switch Watch. I'm Juan Romero, and here with me today, I've got James Romero. How you doing, buddy? Hey, yeah, great. Looking forward to this week's games. Did you have some uh, golfing trips this week, I heard? Yeah, but let's not talk about the result. <laughs> right, if you're new to this channel, we look at new games, bargains, and all the physical games coming to the Nintendo Switch on a weekly basis, as well as reviewing Nintendo Switch games. We watch, so you don't have to. Quite, and I've been trying to get hold of you all week, but I know you've been playing Deadly Premonition 2. Is it as janky as the first one? Of course it's janky, James. We wouldn't have it any other way, would we? Okay, fair enough. Um, I can't talk about it too much because it's under embargo. But we know that the first game had pretty dire visuals, a frame rate that was pretty awful. But who cares when the story was so engaging? And I can't say, to be honest, if part two is going to be any different. The essence of the first game remains, which for me is absolute gold. And I personally wouldn't have it any other way. Here we have Agent York Morgan again, investigating a bunch of strange murders, but it's actually two cases and one mystery, both in different years, and it's brought together in this narrative. And of course, well, for review, I will let you know on Wednesday whether it's worth your hard-earned cash. I know, James, that you didn't play the first one, but you, you've heard that it's pretty mixed. Yeah, well, I remember the first one being quite divisive. It had that kind of, uh, it's so bad, it's good nature about it. Um, and I do know that there is a physical release on this one as well. Absolutely, yeah, we'll put some uh, links in the description. But uh, I know that Jordan will cover that on Monday as well. All right, so that's my pick of the week, everybody. I'm going to move on now, and James is going to tell us about his pick of the week. Well, for me, this was a very, very easy pick. I reviewed Curse of the Moon Part 1 when it came out. It's a classic 2D action game. It's dark, it's got that 8-bit aesthetic and those nice retro sounds as well. This was overseen by Koji Garashi himself, the legendary developer from Konami that made Castlevania Symphony of the Night, one of my all-time favourite games. So anything where he has his hand in it, I am all in. What about you, Juan? Yeah, this is an insta-buy for me. I don't even need a review to tell me whether to buy this or not. It's just an insta-buy, as simple as that. And I heard that um, in this one, players can also create demon hunting duos in a two-player local co-op, which is available for the first time. That's quite interesting. Me and you can then play in co-op, right? I am looking forward to it. And there are a bunch of new characters that have been around for the first time also. So yeah, can't wait to get a hand on this yeah, one. Yeah, looking forward to this one. No doubt about that. Zangetsu also joins forces with figures from the past. Miriam, a young woman who had shards transplanted by alchemists. Alfred, an alchemist on a continuous journey through the Logaith texts. Right, up next it's Catherine Fullbody, and I have to be honest, I have never played this game, I don't know anything about it. Juan, tell us about it. Well, this one's due to drop on the Switch on the 7th, and it's around £45. It's a game I played a while ago now. I found it to be really entertaining, certainly very different. Here on the Switch, we will be getting the definitive version. It's got a new character, 13 endings, and for me, it had a very entertaining story. It's a very adult game. It does it, look a bit saucy, I have to say. It, it is very saucy. <laughs> um, and if you're unfamiliar, well, Vincent, he should be on the verge of getting married. Right, well, okay. He's been with his girlfriend a long time. James, I know you're getting married next year, for real. Yeah, I am, I am. Looking forward to the wedding. And um, I've been with my girlfriend for a very long time. Um, and everyone keeps telling me I should be getting married as well, right? So he's been with his long-term girlfriend of five years. But instead of proposing and sort of taking his relationship to the next step, he has an affair with Catherine. Ooh. <laughs> and she's intense, right? She's, by all purposes, you know, you see in the game, she's gorgeous, she's a blonde. Um, and on top of that, his life then goes into a spin because he's having this affair, all right, with this, with this Catherine girl. And then he finds solace in the very innocent Rin. So then it's another. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, right? It gets real saucy. And in any case, the narrative drives this action adventure puzzler where you've got to make choices to determine your fate with those 13 possible endings. I love games like this where you actually have choices in the narrative. The thing is, these types of games, uh, I do like a story-driven game, but is it any good though? Some of these sort of adult ones can be just a little bit sleazy. Uh, 
I like it, man. And it, yeah. it's, it's not only got the story, but it's got these addictive puzzles that you have to overcome in this kind of nightmare, right? Um, and there's even a co-op mode for those that are interested. Overall, it was a good game in the first place. And I've no doubt, as long as the port's good, this is going to be a game that I think most of our subscribers and guys on Discord are going to pick up. Okay. Cool. Now, this is certainly shaping up to be a particularly strong week. CrossCode is a fabulous game that came out back in 2015. And as long as the port is a good one, then there is no doubt in my mind that many people are going to enjoy this fantastic action role-playing game, which combines 16-bit visuals with fast-paced combat. If you like sci-fi, then this will also have you engaged due to its sci-fi based narrative and cool little puzzles thrown in. Now, I know me and you both love sci-fi. We certainly do, James. There's easily 50 to 80 hours of gameplay to be enjoyed here with over 120 enemies, 30 boss battles, and many quests too. And to top all that off, it's got a visual style that we both love, don't we? Absolutely. And the musical tracks here, I can already say without question, as long as this port is a good one, then this should be a buy for anyone who likes these type of games. And if you like physicals and you're a physical collector, then you're going to love some of these editions that are available. James, just tell us a little bit of detail about these. Yeah, so there's a retail edition that you can pick up from game and other places. There's a lovely steelbook edition and a collector's edition. Can't wait to see them. And that's from Strictly Limited Games, isn't it? Correct. Brilliant. I'm sure Jordan will go into more detail on Monday with his physical uh, game releases, which will be cool. Can't wait for that one. So next up, we've got Super Liminal, which is a first-person puzzle-based game, and it comes out on the 7th of July, $12.95 or $16, and that's 20% off these prices if you pre-purchase. Now, this has a forced perspective and optical illusions. It promises to give you a sense of the unexpected, and ordinarily, if I had a lazy Sunday afternoon free, I'd probably pick this one up and give it a go because I do quite like these first person puzzle games but it's such a strong week that there's five or six games for me anyway that I would buy before this one so I might have to look at this one when it's on a sale what do you think James yeah I think this is going to go under the radar and actually if I want to have a lazy Saturday afternoon story game well I think you sold me on Catherine Fullbody I want to see what my man Vincent gets up to yeah no doubt about that one James no doubt next up we've got a top-down shooter called Gertie. That one's dropping um, next week as well, which is, again, it's a strong week. What do you think about this one, mate? So Gertie drops on the Nintendo Switch on the 6th, and it's a top-down twin-stick shooter roguelike with destructible environments. You can play with up to four players in a local car <laughs> and choose four different characters. I'm always up for the next twin-stick shooter, and with this one, you have to take out a bunch of aliens with the ability to upgrade gear. I'm all in. What about you? Yeah, do you remember back in the day, mate, when I had the Amiga and I was about 14 or something like that, you was about 7 or 8 or something, and obviously you couldn't play it, but you did anyway. Um, <laughs> Alien Breed. This Ooh, reminds me yeah. of Alien it Breed, It does look man. a bit like it. That was a great game. Oh, mate, brilliant. It, it took me back, and um, I think I'm just going to buy it just because it reminds me a little bit of that. Right, well, let's see, let's see. It's just a pretty crowded genre. It's a great genre, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of them out there. But yeah, if it's anything like Alien Breed, I'm, I'm, I'm up for it. The thing is, mate, to get my money, all you have to just say is twin stick shooter. I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> right, up next, it's Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town. Now, Juan, if I'm not mistaken, this is one that Jordan's reviewing at the minute. Yeah, 100% he's reviewing this one, and there's a good reason why I've stopped playing these games, James. Stop playing all farming sims. I cannot invest any more time with the veggies the livestock the fruits to grow and harvest you know the cooking and all that looking after stuff because you know why why i just lose hundreds of hours of my time to <laughs> it's hard enough to do it in real life <laughs> i'm telling you mate um at least though here you can get married the town is full of singles for you to get to know um there's plenty to explore here too and jordan will have his review ready for you so if you are interested in our thoughts on the game don't forget to subscribe after finishing this video and hit that bell so you don't miss that video. I'm sure people are going to probably like this one if they're into farming sims. I know you are. I mean, you like farming sims, but uh, yeah, for me, they're just a massive time sink. 100%. And part of that reason is because the Switch is so great yeah, being handheld. It's the perfect home for these types of games. Yeah, I mean, look at those visuals, though. Don't they remind you so much of Animal Crossing? And when I say time sink, that's one of the biggest reasons. I've spent months with my daughter on Animal Crossing as well. They do look like a really similar Animal Crossing style, which isn't a bad thing. No, absolutely. Definitely has me interested. But again, that, that time sick, keep me away from these games. <laughs>
Next game that I want to talk about, James, is The Great Perhaps. The reason is, when I first saw this trailer and I heard the tick tick noise, it reminded me of a program that I'm watching now on Netflix called Dark, this German program, which is absolutely fantastic and goes into a lot of time travel aspects and sci-fi. And while this has the same sort of thing, it's got challenging puzzles and mini games based around time travel, which is something that I'm really interested in. Dark is a complete mind bender, by the way. It's such a great series. What I like about this game is the the hand drawn 2D art style it reminds me a little bit of like a, a Saturday morning cartoon. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, apparently it's got these characters each have their own personal stories with an interactive soundtrack which adapts to each timeline. So this is certainly one that's got me quite interested. It's from um, Daedalic Entertainment, and they usually come up with the goods. It's an intriguing one, one to look out for. What have we got next, Juan? Next up, we've got Distraint 2, which follows on from the first game. It's one of the cheaper games this week, £6.19, or for our friends in the US and Europe, £7.99. This is a side-scrolling 2D game with unique hand-drawn visuals, which I know you always like. I do, and this one's got a nice creepy feel about it. Jesse McKinnon, the developer, actually uh, described it with lofty heights by saying it's a combination of Silent Hill, Zelda, and Monkey Island. Now, if it reached anywhere near those heights, we'd be pretty happy. Yeah, I'll be all, all over that, definitely. So moving on to the next Next game today we have Elden Path of the Forgotten. This is another game that has a style that I really like James. Here you get to guide Elden on a mission across a blighted land to save their mother from ancient horrors and you have to master those eldritch magics. I know you love all of that stuff. Yeah this one's got a lot of action to it. I like the fact that the combat is about the art of parrying and making sure you're in the right position to strike. Sounds rather interesting and this is a stronger week so let's see if people give this one a chance. Yeah let's let's hope they do because it's just got one of those art styles that I really like the look of so um, I think this one's definitely worth keeping an eye out for. All right, and up next, it's a game that hopefully does what it says on the tin. This one is called Creepy Tale. Juan, tell us about it. Well, it's a very, very creepy tale. And it's about a brother that uh, is looking for his brother that's been taken by inhumane beings. And you have to solve a number of puzzles on the way. If you let yourself get caught, then you don't save your brother. So that's basically what it's all about. You've got to solve the secrets in this forest to restore Piece. It sounds rather interesting. It's got some dark visuals. I quite like the look of it. I'd give this one a go. But again, it's been a very, very strong week this week, and there's a number of games that I'd prefer to buy ahead of this one. Okay, creepy puzzler. That sums it up for now. Definitely. It's lining up to be a pretty strong week, Juan. Thanks for having me on. You're welcome, James. Absolutely no problem at all. It's a pleasure every week. Hopefully next week we can get Jordan on again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And actually, we were talking earlier about uh, maybe bringing in some Q&A. So if anyone wants to leave us a comment, how can they get in touch with us? Yeah, look, uh, we would love to answer some questions. We'll take a moment to answer one or two each week. And you can contact us either on our Discord, which I know many of you have joined up to. And we'll have the link in the description. Or just leave us a comment letting us know what your question is. And we'll answer that, hopefully, on our video next week. That sounds good. Looking forward to it. Brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are new here and this is your first time, then we do these videos every week where we take a look at upcoming games, new physical games, and James, you're taking a look at bargains tomorrow. Tell us a little bit about that. I am. I mean, basically, we go raiding the eShop. There's just so many on there. It's actually a bit ridiculous, to be honest. There's hundreds of games, and what we aim to do is slice it up and find you the ones that are worth your hard on cash. Simple yeah, as that. basically worth your money, and I know that you've been looking into that and you've got some great bargains for us tomorrow. Jordan will be looking at all the physical games on Monday and in between that we'll also be reviewing some games so if you are new here make sure you subscribe and hit that bell and we look forward to seeing you very soon take care everyone cheers for hanging out with us see you later